Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the hydrology and what is a hydrologic cycle. So let's start. Now, as you can see, this hydrology word that is composed of the two separate words that is hydro and logy. So this logy that means study and this hydro means related with water. So the study or the science which is related to the water that is known as the hydrology. So this hydrology is a science that deals with the depletion and replenishment of our water resources. And these water resources may be either surface sources or the groundwater sources. And in total, this hydrology, it deals with the occurrence, that means where the water is present, then this circulation of water that is from one place to the another, that is the circulation of water and then ultimately, what is the distribution level of the water. That is what this hydrological cycle, it is being dealt with. Now this occurrence, circulation and distribution of water that may be on the earth or in the atmosphere, it may be anywhere. So this study that is known as the hydrology. Now usually what you see that is from the clouds the precipitation happens so that is the first form or the first phase you can say now this precipitated water now this precipitated water it runs off on the ground that is known as the runoff and when it is exposed to the certain degrees then it gets evaporated so that phase is known as the evaporation so all of these are the different components of the hydrological cycle and after getting evaporated this water vapor gets condensed to the clouds and they, these clouds they move because of the certain wind effects. So this way this cycle works and it is a never ending cycle where which is having no initial point or the final point. Now this hydrology that is classified into two that is the scientific hydrology and the second one is known as the engineering hydrology. Now there is basic difference between these two as the name itself suggests. The scientific hydrology it deals with the study of water which is concerned with the academic aspects that means the records of the past data of the water sources or the usage of the water sources that is being dealt with in the scientific hydrology while in the engineering hydrology that is concerned with the engineering applications of the sources of the water what are the different water processes what would be the application of them that is being dealt with engineering hydrology which is also known as the applied hydrology so that is the aspect that we are going to deal with in this particular subject. Now, before moving to the application of the different processes of this hydrological cycle, we need to understand that where the water is present on the earth's surface and in what amount. So for that, if we look at the water distribution chart, for that if we look at this water distribution on the earth's surface so out of the 100 units of the water 97.5 units that is present in the oceans which is a salt water that means it would require further treatment for the consumption so this requires for the treatment that means out of this 100 only this 2.5 units that is present as the fresh water which can be consumed. Now 
out of this 2.5 units, the 79% that is present in the form of the ice caps and the glaciers which is stored and cannot be used directly. The rest 20% is present in the form of the groundwater which is extracted with the help of the tube wells, deep wells or the open wells. Now this groundwater that is also a concern because it is continuously depleting. That means the level of water which is present below the earth's surface that is continuously decreasing. And that leaves us only with the 1% of the fresh water. Now that 1% is further present in the lakes as by 52%. And 38% the second highest which is present in the soil. Then the third highest is the presence in the atmosphere in the form of the water vapors. And then the rest of the amount that is present in the rivers and in the living organisms. So that is how water is distributed on the surface of the earth. Now once we have got the understanding of this water distribution. Then we will look at the hydrological cycle or the water cycle which is continuously occurring on the earth surface. Now in order to understand the occurrence, circulation and the storage of the water, this hydrological cycle which is also known as the water cycle, it can be analyzed. Now the precipitation and the evaporation that continues forever because this precipitation what is it doing it is adding the water on the earth surface and what is this evaporation doing it is decreasing or reducing the water which is present on the earth surface and that's why this precipitation and evaporation it maintains a balance on the earth surface between the two and it can be understood from the water cycle and as we have already seen that it is a continuous process and there is no starting point and the end point or any point in the middle at which it can be paused. So that is a water cycle. Now what is the process here? So the sun clouds now in order to understand this water cycle we can start at any point. So let's say these clouds are moving on the earth surface. Now these are moving because of these certain wind effects and when it reaches a certain place where the water can be lost by the cloud in the form of the precipitation then this precipitation happens either in the form of the rain or in the form of the snow or in the form of the hails or there are different number of forms in which the precipitation may happen. Once this precipitation happens the water gets the runoff that means it is flowing under the gravity. Then if there are certain depressions for example this one so this water will be stored in this form that is known as the lake. Then remaining water that will also run off and it would fill another depression if that is present and the rest of the water that would join the sea. Now this water which is exposed to the sunlight that is getting evaporated continuously and then again it is forming the clouds and these clouds under the effect of the wind they move over the land and gets precipitated. This could be understood from the different cycle. So as you can see in this image as the evaporation from the ocean is happening the water vapors are going up and up in the atmosphere. At the suitable height the water vapors are condensed into a cloud form. This cloud it moves over the land because of the certain wind effects. So that means the moisture is present over the land. When it reaches a suitable place again then this precipitation on the land it happens either in the form of the raindrops 
or in the form of the snow or different precipitation forms this certain portion of the precipitation it is getting infiltrated that means it is getting into the ground that portion of the precipitation is known as the infiltration now in the infiltration there are two components if it is getting infiltrated in the deeper reaches that is known as the deep percolation while if the infiltration or the seepage of the water is happening in the top layer only that is known as the infiltration rest of the water that will be filled in the depressions which further form the lakes as we see them then the rest of the water that will be again getting deposited in the form of the runoff in the different lakes now as you can see this is present in the form of the dam so the certain portion which is stored behind the dam that is known as the reservoir so that would be storing the water and along with it the ground water that will be recharged because of this infiltrated water now because of the difference in the level of the ground water table the water would be moving from one place to the another and it would be recharging the ocean and again this process will start because this evaporation was continuously happening now there are few points which are to be understood from this cycle that is that is the evaporation on the ocean when we talk about the evaporation it is more on the ocean than the land and when we talk about the precipitation that means where the rainfall is more than it is more on the land than the ocean that is a common observation that has been generated because of the lots of study which is being carried out on this hydrological cycle so there are different components of the water cycle which we will be dealing with one by one so the first and foremost component of this water cycle that is known as the precipitation second component that is known as the evaporation third one is the runoff now the fourth one is the transpiration now what is this transpiration now when the water is falling over the land let's say the rainfall is happening over this area then this dropping rain water that will be intercepted by this obstruction which is present on the earth surface this obstruction in the path of the rain drops or in the precipitated water that is known as the interception now the water is used by the plants up to a certain extent now the water which is used by the plant that is known as the transpiration and if the plants are evaporating that water after using them then that is known as the evapotranspiration which is a combination of the evaporation and the transpiration then the fifth stage is the infiltration or the deep percolation now when we look at this complete cycle then we must understand that what is the water budget as we usually say budget is basically a statement which is maintaining an account of the income and the expenditure that means what is incoming and what is the outgoing the difference between the two is the savings the similar case happens with the water when we talk about the water cycle then we must understand this is the water budget now what is this water budget so if we look at this cycle what is incoming so this precipitation that is denoted by capital p that is a positive sign because that is being adding the water to the earth already present level of the water then out of this 
incoming water certain amount is getting run off that is represented by the capital R but that is a negative sign because that is not getting stored in the earth ground water then certain amount is getting evaporated that is represented by capital E with again the negative sign then certain amount is getting transpired or is being utilized by the plants in the form of the transpiration that is again a negative sign then certain amount that is getting percolated which is present in the ground water that's why the name is symbolized by this capital G with again the negative sign now according to the conservation of the mass the mass of inflow that means whatever the amount of water that is coming minus the mass of outflow that means if we are having 10 units of the inflow and the 10 units of the outflow that means the net value is zero but if let's say the inflow is 15 units but the outflow is only 10 units that means additional 5 units have been added to the earth level that means the 5 units will be stored and let's say if 10 units was in the form of the inflow and 15 units has gone out of the system that means out of the already present water level in the system the 5 units have been depleted so that's why this is written as the equal to change in storage now if we represent this equation with the help of the usual symbols so this precipitation is adding up then this runoff is getting deducted then again evaporation is getting deducted then groundwater and transpiration all of them is getting deducted then this change in storage that is represented by delta s now this can be plus or minus or can also be equal to zero so this is the equation which is maintaining the account of all the water which is coming onto the earth surface and this equation is known as the water budget equation now this equation is based upon the principle of the conservation of mass this is the principle which is involved in determining the water budget equation so that completes the basic discussion regarding the hydrology and the hydrological cycle now in the next video we'll start with the first component of the water cycle that is known as the precipitation and what are the different forms of the precipitation thank you